Hi everyone, welcome back to another Procrastinator episode, a knitting podcast, where I talk about knitting. So yes, my name is Jane if you're new here, um, and welcome back if you're returning. Today I have um, something new to share and then progress on some things you've already seen but nothing has been completed, so that's just the nature of things these days. Um, yeah, but we can just jump right into it. If you don't know me, I'm a knitter, I also crochet, and um, it's been a really fun and rewarding hobby. So let me just get my stuff. Okay, so the first thing I have to show you, you will have seen, but oh, I guess now I have things to look forward to when I podcast because I can move my progress keepers. But um, here is my progress on the Ode to Barbara Socks by Summer Lee. I'm going to move the stitch marker. I talked about these last episode, but I made them myself. So that is fun. Move it up. If you remember from last episode, I did like a handful too many decreases. So then I had to ladder for the gusset and I had to ladder down and pick things back up and what I ended up doing I did not rip back um, and what is happening is I think the uh, the number of stitches is just off by maybe two or three or something like that something uh, small but still I don't know so that's what I did I'm just gonna knit um, and pretend like it's fine, and I guess in the other sock I'll have to reflect that too, because I kind of I want them to fit at least similarly. I don't know. I don't know how off it'll be, but yeah, this is a lace uh, pattern, really simple lace pattern, and I really like it so far. And the yarns I'm using, oh yeah, that's pretty. The yarns I'm using is Malabrigo Ultimate Sock uh, in the color, I think this is Peggy, and then this is Malabrigo Sock Zara Mora. So yeah, this is so nice, right? Oh, so pretty. Three by one rib with the pattern in the front. Yeah, I just, I really like how it looks. And um, I just have been really busy lately, so I have not had time to do too much knitting. I have like, I have a lot of, um, well I'm working three jobs which is kind of a lot. It's not, I mean there's a lot of flexibility in all three jobs but it's still a, like, I don't know, kind of exhausting to, um, yeah, to, to have three jobs. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then I also have hobbies other than knitting so I'm also like wanting to do that or like clean or cook and feed myself so it's just um not a lot of time these days but you know that's okay and and I've been like looking into markets to sell ceramics as well as looking into grad programs and applying to that for next fall so it is a lot but anyways so that is why I my progress was like an inch for this, even though it's been almost a month since my last um since I last recorded my episode last episode. That's okay. Um, yeah, my next whip I have to show is my test knit. So this is going a uh, well. I mean, it was not going well for a while, and then it was, and then it's fine again. So. Here it is, I've joined for the round. I've made lots of progress since last time, which is good because, you know, it's a test knit. Um, the good thing is she, this is for Eames Knits and she just extended the deadline again. So originally the deadline was like November 1st or something. And then she took a little longer to finish up the pattern or like the formatting. So then she gave us two extra weeks and then she just checked in um, 
because it, the pattern or the knit will have been due in a month and a lot of people myself included were a little bit worried about that deadline so she extended it uh another two weeks so that is really really lovely of her to do um and yeah i'm really glad she's understanding of that because it is a fingering weight uh sweater so it is quite a bit of um quite a bit of work to complete I'm very glad I got to the stockinette portion. I mean, I guess the sweater is in stockinette. I mean, uh, in I'm glad I got to start knitting in the round because I don't have to worry about purling and that is really nice. The downside is when you join things in the round, you're no longer working with half of your fabric and things are taking twice as long because you've doubled the amount of stitches essentially. So, you know, pro, pro and con <laughs> to, to it all, but if it was on bigger needles, it would um, fly by faster, but currently I'm knitting these on US size 2, 2.75 millimeter needles. So it's quite small. I went down a needle size from the suggested uh, size in order to hit gauge. But um, this is a polo, if you're new, <laughs> this is a polo, uh, kind of construction um so there's going to be a, a button placket here but I don't think there's going to be buttons I think just a just a placket and and there are going to be long sleeves so that's the other thing it's like a sweater sweater so I'm, I'm really glad she's being accommodating with the uh, schedule I'm gonna take a sip of my uh, this does not look so pretty on camera but I made um, sea salt cream at home and I just added that to a cold brew. It's pretty good. It looks not that appetizing and I think my ratio is a little off. I think I could use a little bit more cold brew. And I think I whipped the sea cream a bit, a bit too thick. It's okay okay so with this sweater I'm sorry to say I don't think I'll ever do, do another test knit or I don't know if this is the best test knit to do as my first test knit because one it's a really long project um I think that that's the only reason really um is it's a really long project um but why this turned me away from test knitting in the future is um I don't know is because because it's a test knit there's obviously gonna be some mistakes in the pattern and that's the point of a test knit is to figure out those mistakes um but I guess I <laughs> for some reason I didn't think about how when you catch a mistake you'd have to like undo the work that you put in and redo it <laughs> I should have I should have thought of that or I should have like expected it um yeah I guess I just didn't I guess yeah I wasn't thinking I wasn't thinking but not but that's just to say like the nature of test knitting in general nothing about this test knit specifically because I've actually had a really good experience with this test knit specifically but I say that to say that what had happened was I read the directions wrong or the directions were written in a way that wasn't super clear so I misinterpreted, that's a better way to say it, I misinterpreted the directions and I knit, you know, the, this front panel and this front panel, I was ready to join in the round and then when I did it was time to do the armhole uh, increases and I realized I maybe should have started them earlier but then I don't know there was lots of math involved and because there are numbers you're supposed to keep track of that's how many rows you knit like something 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 like that it was very very confusing I had to draw out diagrams and like try to figure out I was trying to figure out if I was wrong or if the pattern was wrong or what I don't know but I and I did in the end we figured it out so the final pattern will be more clear but um 
yeah, it was not, it was, let me tell you, it was not fun to rip back the knitting. Um, but yeah, no, we, we get it now. It's good now. And I'm just, basically now all I do is knit the body until, um, until the bottom and then I do the sleeves. But now we are fine. Before a little bit, I was very, very frustrated because one, I was doing math when I didn't expect to do math. It's not hard math. It's literally like counting things up and seeing things add up. <laughs> but it was still like, I don't know. I don't know. I think if you knit or design, you'll probably get it. But I like how it looks so far. Um, and yeah, it's using a lot less yarn than I thought or or the yarn that I'm using is going farther than I thought, which uh, is nice. <laughs> um, some things I'm realizing with the yarn choice. So to review the blue, the cobalt, cobalt is a, a thrifted yarn that I got at like, I don't even know what thrift store, uh, but in Philly, I got 300 grams, three balls for under five dollars and it's a hundred percent wool so that felt like major steel fingering weight major steel right um and that yarn has been really nice to work with however <laughs> the other yarn the brown is a webs yarn i'm pretty sure it's it's not the best let me actually try to uh, figure out what yarn it is because I feel like that's helpful. Now I'm confused. I didn't realize this is what it is. So when you feel this yarn in its, like, in this form, it feels soft, nice to work with, like, not itchy on the skin. Huh, maybe it was just that ball. I don't know, but this feels very soft, very awesome. This is Cloud Worn Fibers, Alpaca Highland Wool. It's a 50-50. Um, and yeah, you would think, you would think that'd be fine to knit with. I actually bought this with the intention of knitting a camisole, one of the camisoles from My Favorite Things Knitwear, which if you know is next to skin. And yeah, I really thought that, I mean, it's a pretty uh, affordable yarn, which is why I bought it. And I like this color. I thought uh, like a tank top in this color might be nice. But then I just like couldn't get my myself to buy the pattern and cast it on. Um, so then I ended up using it for this project instead. And when I'm knitting with it, it is a little bit scratchy, not unbearable. But what is frustrating actually is because the sweater has gotten to this um size you know when i have it in my lap it actually is really super prickly against my skin really uncomfortable against my skin um which is not something i would have expected and yeah so i'm not sure yeah i'm not sure i, I guess I'll have to wash and block it after I finish it and see and give you the final verdict. But right now I'm not loving I'm not loving the alpaca and wool and now I'm like what if I I'm like allergic to alpaca? I don't know. I didn't realize there was alpaca in this. Um but I don't know. I've heard some things about like guard hairs. I don't know if this is a case where it's like there are too many guard hairs in here still or what. I don't know. If you've had experience with it and you feel it's itchy, I would love to know so I feel not crazy. But yeah, like when this is like resting against my thigh, I'll be like, oh my gosh, that is not comfortable. So I don't know, maybe I'm more sensitive in my thigh area or like my legs than I would be um, if I wore it as a sweater. I'm not sure. So I'll have to report back on that. But it's just making me realize that, you know, I'm glad I didn't go ahead with a camisole because I think I would have been really uncomfortable. And at least with this, it's like, um, it's broken up, it's not all over, and it's something I could wear a layer underneath and still wear this garment. So, um, that, that was good to know. 
but as I was saying, I'm really surprised by the yardage of these uh, yarns. I mean, I don't think it's like anything to do with the yarn in particular, but um, I guess because I usually knit fingering weight uh, at a size zero or one or something really tiny for socks, um, I didn't realize <laughs> what a difference one needle size uh, would make. So. Uh, let's see if I can show you. So all of this so far, I haven't even used 50 grams of the brown yet. So here's, I mean, I'm approaching it. Like I'm close to, I'm close to being done with it, but like, uh, yeah, I still have a little bit left, probably at least one repeat left, uh, for the brown. So yeah, I feel like that just went a really long way. And for the blue, this is how much I have left of 100 grams. So I, I still feel like I have quite a bit of this left as well. And um, for the blue, I'm doing uh, 20 rows or rounds in the blue and 16 rows or rounds in the brown. So because I have less uh, uh, brown yardage than the blue um I figured I would do that to kind of like um make sure I didn't run out of either yarns or okay sorry how to phrase I have more than enough yarn to complete the sweater but I do not have equal amounts of blue and brown which is why and I have more blue than brown which is why I offset the uh, the stripes like that but Anyways, so I mean, all this has not, this is not yet 150 grams of yarn, which I feel like um, it's pretty crazy. I don't know. Uh, it just took me by surprise, I guess. Yeah, that was, that's what I had to say about that. Um, did I move my stitch marker? Yes, I did. Okay, cool. Yeah, and then this one has a stitch marker, as you can see again. Very cool. So that is this project. So yeah, while I was being upset at this project for the math situation, <laughs> I cast it on a new project because I was like, I cannot live with this anymore. Like I'm sick, I'm tired. I do not want to think about this pattern and the math. So I had to take a little break. Now we're fine because I've joined in the round, but before that was, you know, it was testy. But, let me see, okay, I cast it on a sweater, a very basic raglan sweater. So, this is what I have so far. This was probably a couple days of working on it. It's working up super duper fast. This is, um... How do we say? This is, yeah, a very simple raglan sweater. I um, am not following a pattern, but I am using the numbers from the My Favorite Things Knitwear cardigan number seven that I knit up. Um, I am using those numbers to do the raglan, just in terms of like how to divide up the stitches, the rate of increases, that sort of thing. Um, yeah, because I thought it would be a pretty easy modification. So I guess I'll keep you updated on how it goes. Um, but it's really, really nice. I don't know if you can hear my needles. Maybe that's annoying. Oh, I don't have a stitch marker on here. Oh, cause I, <laughs> Because the last time you saw it, it didn't exist. <laughs> so I guess I will have to put a stitch marker to mark my progress. But yeah, this yarn is like a pinkish, purplish. It's a cool toned sweater, but there's, you know, light purples, some blues and a little kind of warm, warmer pink in there as well. I really like it. Um... This yarn is Malabrigo Mecca in, oh man, I don't know the colorway. I don't have it with me, I don't have it handy with me, but 
really, really gorgeous. I um, got the yarn from William's mom, Storm underscore knitter on Instagram. And yeah, she gave me a sweaters quantity. So I, of course I'm gonna make a sweater or a cardigan of some sort. So yeah, I decided to go with this. This is uh, one of the best yarns I've ever worked with in terms of like how it feels in my hands and how it feels to like feed through my finger to knit with. It's so soft, it's so uh, nice to work with. So yeah, I'm really pleased with the yarn. Let me put on a stitch marker real quick though. Or a progress keeper, I mean. Yeah. I have one left, maybe I need to make more. Okay, so I just put a stitch marker on there so next week or next episode you'll see how far I've gone. Um, but yeah, this was really easy and quick to knit up. The yarn is wonderful to work with. Um, one thing is, I've so many times now tried to spit, split, splice, spit, splice. I don't know what, what it is. Uh, yarn, where you like um, join two balls of 100% wool yarn by like adding water and rubbing it together to kind of like felt the yarn strands together. I have tried it so many times. And every single time, I'm unsuccessful. So, I have no clue. I have no clue. Um, I've started weaving in my ends as I go, or like knitting in my ends as I go. So it's not, so it's fine. But, yeah, I just want to say, I don't understand. Like, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. Put a little water. I like open up the fibers a little. Mesh them into each other. And then roll to create like friction and heat. And it literally never works. Literally never works. So, I don't know. But anyways, I digress. Um, okay, I guess I'll, I'll put it up and see if... <laughs> you can. You totally can. Uh, see if you can spot where I joined in a new ball of yarn. Um, is it obvious to you as it is to me? Let's see the back. Maybe it's less visible this side but I think it's still pretty it's not pretty noticeable but it is noticeable so the line is right here it's like right there it's hard to show but this is the line right here is where I joined a new ball this yarn did not come in dye lots it didn't have dye lots so for some reason I mean looking at this yarn you would think you would think you should alternate it you know because it looks but it looks so it's so hard to tell when they're like this like you just don't know so because it didn't come with a dye lots I was like oh does that mean they've like and and because it's a pretty commercial yarn this is Malabrigo Mecca in case you forgot those reasons I was like it will be fine if I don't alternate skeins. But obviously it's not fine and I've learned my lesson. So that's that. So um, yeah, after I joined in the new ball, I was like, oh, we should probably start alternating skeins. So that is what I started doing. And thanks to the knitting YouTubes, I have... Uh, started helical knitting uh, in order to not make like a seam so this is when I joined in the another ball of yarn to start the helical knitting and I've only done it for like a handful of rounds so this is where the other strand is right now but um, I'm not yeah I'm not sure if it's like making a difference I don't know maybe the two things weren't even that different in the first place the two new balls but um but yeah I have this and this so this I put in my yarn cozy because it starts off as a really huge cake and I noticed when I was knitting the very first one that toward the end it was like really collapse collapsing um, so I was like, okay, next time I need to do a cake. And then this had gotten to the point of total collapse. So I ended up 
um, winding it into a ball to make it just a little bit easier to work with because in just such a small quantity, a ball is just the way to go. But yeah, so I've been heel glue knitting. If you don't know what that is, you should just look it up. I don't think I can explain it very well. I'm just getting the, the hang of it myself. Um, and I actually don't understand at all how, how it, uh, how it works. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't think I understand it. But, oh well. It's also a technique you can use if you want jogless stripes. Um, but yeah, I just thought I would throw that out there. Heel glue knitting, a new skill that I have learned. So... That is nice at least and yeah now I'm alternating skeins I'll do that for the rest of the sweater and hopefully that will um, cause me to not have that drastic change but uh, yeah it's kind of hard to tell right like you can't really, you can't really see it right so it's fine all right we'll see so that is that and I'm knitting a size medium um following the cardigan measurements I'm just knitting a size medium um, oh yeah, and the Yarn Cozy, I have a tutorial up of how I made these, or this one, on here, on my channel, if you want to check it out. But, um, yeah, they're really useful. And that is my last, my last whip. Yeah, this yarn is so wonderful to work with, I can't say that enough. Um, I worked with the, like, the super bulky Malabrigo yarn too, like, last winter I remember saying it was like so soft like the best thing ever and I don't know like it's a single ply it's just like twisted and like I don't know if that's it I don't know what it is but it is so flippin soft and the fabric is so soft and there's like a soft halo oh my gosh yeah so I'm really enjoying it <laughs> I'm really having a good time I just haven't had uh, time to do much knitting between all my jobs and uh, and applying to schools and doing ceramics and things like that. So that's a shame. But yeah, that's that. That's my last whip. That's the last thing I have to share with you. And actually, other things, um, other things that are coming up. I, if you remember the red dress. Oh man, the red. The red dress with this We Are Knitters yarn, cotton, beautiful, beautiful yarn. This is the nicest cotton I've worked with, so I'd like to work with it and turn it into something. But um, the dress didn't work out. If you want to know more, you can watch last the last episode. Um, but I found a pattern that I want to knit that yarn up into so i'll probably not cast it on until i finish either the polo or this pullover or some, one of the, these two larger projects but um i guess i'll put it up on the screen because i forgot what it's called it's not on ravelry which is why in my searches i'm just I've been like so desperate but I have seen it on Instagram it's super popular on Instagram or or uh, had a phase when it was super popular on Instagram but it's a, a long sleeve top twisted rib all throughout um, and some people have made striped versions but I'll just make a solid color version and it has like a square neckline long sleeves I think that would just look really cute I used to have a shirt that was in that color and looked like that but like um, just like a fabric shirt from like H&M or something and I outgrew it so uh, but I did yeah I love that neckline on me and I know I'd look cute in it so I'm excited to cast that on and I'm excited that I'd like I have a pattern in mind for the yarn um, so yeah that feels really nice that feels good and it's also funny because that garment like so that yarn came in a kit with a pattern for the dill tee on, uh, for, from We Are Knitters, and it was a gift from William's mom. And as I was knitting up the dill tee, that is when I realized I was knitting twisted stitches. And this was like two summers ago. Wow, two summers ago. That's crazy. Um, or was it last summer? 
pretty sure it was two summers ago. It was on this podcast. Yeah, so it was last summer. Um, and yeah, that's when I realized that I'd been knitting twisted stitches uh, because I learned to crochet before I learned to knit. So I think the way I was um, just putting the needle into the loops and that whole thing, I was just doing it wrong or the way I was wrapping my yarn was similar to crochet and that actually creates a twisted stitch. So it was that pattern and that yarn that I was like, oh, like these are twisted stitches and not <laughs> normal knit stitches and I need to fix it um, or like, you know, n know it so that when a pattern is like knit, I'm not knitting twisted. So I don't know, I just think it's full circle and kind of funny that the pattern that I'm going to be using with that yarn is going to be a pattern that uses twisted stitches. Um, yeah, I don't know. I feel like that's kind of sweet. Um, but yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Um, something that I may or may not work on is a cardigan from my grandma. Uh, yeah, we FaceTimed her recently and I was wearing my uh, purple cardigan that I knit uh, and I was like, oh, I made this. And she was like, oh, that's so cute. And then my mom was like, want her to make you one? And I'm not sure if my grandma was entirely enthusiastic about this, but she said yes. And then, so I've been roped into making my grandma a sweater. She wants it to be in yellow. Actually, she wanted it to be in black, but my mom was like, no. So I'm knitting it in yellow. So we'll see. We'll see if she even wears it. But I do think it would be nice if I give it to her. I don't see her very often. She lives in Vietnam. And I don't talk to her very often. And, you know, it would be nice if she got something from me, I think. Um, and one of my aunts is going to Vietnam in a, mo <laughs> in a month. And my mom was like, we'll send it to you in a month. And I was like, I don't know if that's going to happen. But my aunt's going again in February. So that might be the real deadline. Like, I might be... Um, that might be more realistic for me. Well, it would be more realistic for me, but and I don't even have yellow yarn. And I would, because she's in Vietnam, I'd want to knit it in cotton or acrylic, something breathable and something machine washable because I don't expect her to hand wash um, this. So yeah, I shouldn't have asked her what color because now I'm looking at my yarn stash and I have like this blue yarn that I think would be really nice so I guess we'll see maybe I'll talk to my mom about it and she'll say it's fine if I knit her a blue one um and then I wouldn't have to to like add things to my stash because I know I'd buy more yarn than I need um so okay yeah we'll see we'll see what she says about that but those are my plans. I was going to knit down a Hogwarts sweater. I still might, but I don't have the yarn for it. And I feel like I shouldn't knit it out of wool. It should at least be a wool acrylic blend or something. Because I think 100% wool is just too heavy for California. And like she's not going to be able to take care of that. So I don't know. Those are the plans. Um... Yeah, that's pretty much what I have for you. Uh, thanks for joining me. I hope you got to work on something fun while watching. Let me know what you're working on. Let me know if you have any gift knits or knitting plans coming up. Or, yeah, any thoughts you have about what I've said today. That would be great. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. Um, make sure you like this video if you liked it. And subscribe if you want to stick around. You can follow me on Instagram at Taoyong underscore or at Jane Huynh, uh, which is more art ceramics content. And I will catch you in the next episode. Bye!